Today I wanted to talk about houses and mortgage payments, right? So I have this commenter on my YouTube channel from time to time, actually on a weekly basis. And he's a truck driver and he did some OTR for a couple of years and then he went back to his hometown and he found uh, a local job with the union. He's a Teamster, ABF driver. His name is Mr. By The Mile. If you want to go check out his channel, go ahead and check out his channel because obviously, obviously uh, he comes over to my channel to make comments uh, to get my subscribers to go watch his videos. That's what he's doing. He's not talking to me because what he is talking about makes no sense for me. And I thought I've already explained that to him, but he just doesn't seem to get it. Um, I'm not the union kind of dude, so trying to promote the union to me is like talking to a brick wall, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not that long-term employee kind of dude that's going to work for somebody else's company for 20 years. Even if I do get a pension from them, that's just not my style, that's not really my personality. Um, and, and there's more to that conversation. I, I have... I have other opinions on uh, working and jobs and the union and all that, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about the fact that this man bought a house about 12 or 13 months ago, and uh, he's in my comment section constantly making comments about being a homeowner. You know, uh, his latest comment was something about. Uh, so I posted a short in a pickup truck and I was doing a burnout, you know, I was spinning the back tires and uh, it was just, it was just a little fun video. It's, you know, it was nothing, just playing around, burning up some tires before I uh, put some brand new tires on my truck. So I figured I'd do a little burnout and see what this truck could do. Cause I'd never owned one before. And uh, anyway, so I post the picture of this truck doing a burnout and somebody said, just about any car can power break. Okay, so, all right. So, I didn't respond to that comment. I don't know who made that comment. It doesn't matter to me. Some people just like to put their two cents into everything, whether it adds any value to the conversation or not. So, Mr. By the Mile, in response to what that man said, he said, exactly, bro, laughing face. How about let's see what your house looks like, right? I mean... I have a home all over my YouTube at this point. Laughing face, laughing face, laughing face. Uh, and this comment was also made at about 3 a.m. California time. That's when most of his comments are made on my channel. Is in the middle of the night. His time, California time. So I don't know if he's up drinking, making drunk comments on people's YouTube channel. Or, or what it is, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe YouTube's just giving me the, the, the comment notification late. Um, and maybe, but almost every single comment he makes is timed, uh, it, it pops up on my channel in the middle of the night California time. So, and everybody else's comment, when they make a comment, it posts immediately. So if this dude was commenting any other time of the day, it would show up another time of the day. So I'm going to assume my opinion is this dude's up in the middle of the night, drunk texting my YouTube channel, basically, um, because he has nothing else to do, right? He's been off of work since last July on a worker's comp claim injury. He got, and, and he did just get shoulder surgery here recently. And now he's He's going through the three, four, five months of rehab it takes to get a shoulder rehab so he can go back to work. So he's apparently he's bored at the house, right? But he makes he's made a few comments insinuating because he's buying a home and I'm not at this point. Uh, he's doing better than me somehow, some way. So based on his own YouTube channel, I went back and watched the video 11 months ago where he did a house tour and he talked about the house and he talks about 
how much he paid for the house. Um, that is called, that video is called uh, house tour, trucker something house tour. Uh, you can go back and look at it if you want, look for it. Basically just Google ABF driver buys a house and it'll be like the first one on, on YouTube. So in that video, he said he paid $385,000 for the house. He also said he owes about 370 on it right now. So if you do the math, if you do the math on a $385,000 house, and you look at a down payment, right, of 3.5%, okay? A down payment of 3.5% is like uh, 14,000 and change, I think, something like that. It's, uh, it's 13,475. So the reason I'm telling you what a down payment would be, a 3.5% down payment is probably what he put down on this house and he probably got a regular FHA loan at about 6.9%, 7%, something like that, right? And the reason that this is significant is I wanna explain to you what this man's monthly payment more than likely is based on my opinion and my knowledge of the mortgage industry and how to buy a house and all that. See, something that this dude doesn't understand was uh, I bought my first house back in 2000, with my ex-wife okay I was 27 years old and then uh, I got in a bunch of trouble and then the mortgage I went to prison and then the mortgage uh, the everything collapsed right um, yeah 2005 we bought the house everything uh, collapsed 2007 2008 is really 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 when it went bad but uh so I've already been been there done that been been through all this so I just wanted to tell you on a $385,000 house if he put zero uh if he put 3.5 percent down which is usually what you have to put down that's the minimum you can put down with a 580 credit score okay if you have less than a 580 credit score, you gotta put down 10%. So, what this guy more than likely did was put down 3.5%, in my opinion. And if he put down 3.5% on a $385,000 house in Apple Valley, California, which is where he lives, he will tell you that on his own channel, this is what his payment is. And I know that's backwards. I'm going to read it to you. $3,272. This man's mortgage payment is $3,272. Now, that is a massive mortgage payment. Now, I believe in home ownership. I believe in real estate ownership. Absolutely. But I also don't believe that being stretched thin or paying 40, 50, 60% of your income to a house is a real smart idea, right? Now, it depends on the economy. Now, you can, if, if you time the economy right, then you could win really big, even with a big monthly payment. But right now, and one year ago was not the time to be buying a house. I'll tell you that much. Um, not not for not for zero down or 3.5% down. If you had 20, 30, 40, 50% down to put on a house, by all means, absolutely. Because then you could have lowered that interest rate and lowered your monthly payment and all that. But this man insinuates that having a mortgage and buying a house means you've really made it means that you're really successful now that's the way I'm taking it maybe that's not the way he means it I don't know I don't care but let me tell you what success means to me okay 
It also, hold on, it also depends on how old you are. Obviously, the sooner you can get in the house, the better. If you can get in the house in your 20s, great. 30s, eh. 40s, woo! 50s, oh boy! Don't even buy a house in your 50s, I don't think. I don't think. Depends on how much money you could put down. But to lock yourself into a $3,000 a month mortgage payment for 30 years... I, don't, I wouldn't do that in my 50s or my 60s. I w I'm not even going to do it in my 40s. I'm, I'm 46 years old. I plan on buying a house in three years. And it is not going to be a $400,000 house, dude. It's just not. There's no sense in a 50-year-old man buying a $400,000 house unless he can pay cash. If he's got... If he's looking at a $400,000 house and he could offer three fifty dollars cash for it and get it for three fifty, dollars that might be a deal. But this, this guy here, Mr. By the Mile, I think he's 34 years old-ish. I'd have to go back through all his boring videos and, and find his age again. He's said it a couple times, but he's either 34 or 38, somewhere around there. And uh, so... My point I'm getting at is, by all means, buy your own home, absolutely. But to insinuate that you buying a home in your 30s with a $3,200 a month mortgage payment is better than what other people might be doing right now, for instance, myself, um, it's not. It's, it's not any better for me. It might be better for you, I guess. But here's the thing about having a $3,200 a month mortgage payment that you just locked yourself into. You can't sell that house in the next year or two or three or maybe even four or five. Because let's say three to four percent in, uh, increase in property values. You try to sell that. If, if you get in a jam and you have to sell your house within one year of buying it, you are losing money because you're going to pay 30, 40 grand in the first year, right? Because you, you paid closing costs, you paid move-in costs, and then you paid $3,000 a month for a year. So that's 36 grand. So by the time it's all said and done, you're $45,000 into this house in the first 12 months, right? Do you think that house appreciated $45,000 in that first year? No, no, it didn't. It probably won't even... No, even and then you tack on that second year now you're looking at what uh 40 45 55 65 75 so that second year you're seventy five thousand dollars into it did that house appreciate 75 g's in two years so you see what i'm saying do you see what i'm getting at as far as home ownership is extremely risky if you don't put 20 30 percent down the days, listen, listen, every 10 or 15 years, we have an event in, we have an event in the world where, yeah, you might be able to buy a house today and flip it in 12 months for a profit. Um, during the housing bubble of the early 2000s, you could do that. And during the pandemic, you could have done that. But any other time in history, you're not seeing, you know, 10% increases in home values year over year over year. It's just not happening. So housing is a buy and hold investment for the most part, buy and hold investment. But as you get in your 40s and 50s and 60s, do you really want to be paying a $3,200 a month mortgage payment? I don't. Um, so if, if you want to do that, then that's fine. If you plan on being in the same house for 10, 15, 20 years, that's awesome, right? If you plan on being in the same job or at least the same industry career field for 30 or 40 years, awesome. Buy that, buy that overpriced house, you know, buy that expensive house in that expensive neighborhood in that expensive state, you know, but to me, success is freedom, okay? 
being truly free to move around, to do what you need to do, to switch jobs if you need to do it, to start a, to start a business if you need to do it, um, to just not go to work for a week, two, three weeks if you need to do it, you know, that's success to me. And having a $3,200 a month mortgage payment on top of maybe child support and on top of what other whatever other bills you have, that's a pretty big monthly nut, man. That's a pretty big monthly nut. And uh, I used to have a lot of bills. I know I today, I know a lot of people that have a lot of bills. I know a lot of people that support a girlfriend and a wife and a baby's mama and all this other stuff, right? And the problem with having all those high monthly bills is you have no freedom of choice. You can't tell your employer to go fuck off, right? You can't decide you don't like what you're doing and just take two or three, four months off, okay? You can't do that. Like like uh, two years, two summers ago, or 18 months ago now, I parked my semi truck and got a local job for six months, five, six months that didn't pay me shit. But I enjoyed what I was doing. It was fun while it lasted. It was it was five months of really hard, grueling work. Um, but I enjoyed it. It was a good break that I needed from life and from trucking and everything else, right? Um, and it barely paid my bills. Barely paid my bills. And I lived in a very, very cheap town, small town in Arizona at the time. Now, if I had, like right now, I live in the Phoenix area. I have an expensive house, you know, I have higher insurance and and all that stuff. And then I, you know, I like to enjoy the bigger city life. So that's a little more expensive going out to eat and stuff like that. Right. If I was to quit right now and get one of these dumb local jobs that are laid back and not a lot of responsibility, but don't pay shit, I could not pay my bills. Do you see what I'm saying here? is people that tie themselves in to a high mortgage payment don't have a whole lot of choice. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm thinking about giving up my house in the Phoenix area and going back to living in a small town because there's no freedom. There's no freedom when you have a high monthly payment on things, right? So. A guy like me, I am blessed to be in a position where I could get up and go whenever I need to, whenever I want to, you know, uh, my kid and her mother, uh, pretty much just go with the flow, right? Or, and if they don't like what I'm doing, they can go get their own place, right? And they know that. So we, we have that kind of relationship. It, it is what it is, right? Uh, we're doing what's best for us. Now, a lot of people are locked into a relationship that they have very little control in, um, and they are also locked into a financial relationship that they have very little control in. So, success to me is freedom, okay? And a $3,200 a month mortgage payment, that doesn't sound like much freedom to me, right? Now, a rent payment that you could easily get out of the lease, or, or just wait till the lease is up and say, I'm bouncing. Or maybe you're in a month to, to month lease. A month to month lease is usually an extra 50 to 100 bucks a month. I understand that. But it's freedom. It's the freedom to choose, right? That's what success is to me at the moment in my life. I'm not saying you guys need to live like that. <laughs> and to be honest, most of you guys can't live like that because you've already dug yourself such a hole that you can't just get up and walk away from anything. From your job, from your house, from your wife, from your girlfriend. So you're stuck. You're a slave to the paycheck, right? Now, if you don't mind your job and you don't mind the industry you're in and you don't mind taking orders from other people, then yeah, a union job and a very high mortgage payment, buying a house with 
very, very little money down is for you. That is absolutely the choice for you. But see, I'm not an employee kind of guy. That's why I become became a truck driver to begin with. Because number one, it was gonna allow me to make a little more money than I was making at the time, a little more stable money, and it's a profession where I don't have somebody breathing down my neck. Yes, I still have a, a, a boss, obviously. I have my, my boss at my company. I have the brokers, the customers. Yeah, they're my boss, but you know, nobody's gonna tell me when I can eat and when I can't eat, when I can use the bathroom, when I can make a phone call, when I can stop what I'm doing to send a text message or an email. Uh, you know, if I get a hair up my ass and decide to pull over and take a nap, I'll pull over and take a nap. I do what I want. You know, I don't, you know, that, that's one of the great things about trucking. So there, there's an element to freedom in trucking that you don't have in, in other jobs, but there's also an element to being a slave to the truck as well, right? Like having a lot of debt, you know? A lot of truckers can't get out of this lifestyle. A lot of OTR guys wanna preach and go on and on and on about how this is such a lifestyle and you gotta love the lifestyle. No, most of those guys that say trucking is a lifestyle are just stuck in trucking because of their monthly payments on all their shit that they have, right? So that's my conversation on, on housing and uh, real estate. And for those of you that are thinking, well, what is my what is my alternative to a high monthly payment? Well, my alternative is uh, living in the outskirts of town, in the county. Um, yeah, it's a little farther away. Yeah, it's a small town. But depending on where you work and what you do for a living, it could be beneficial. Like myself, I might be moving back out to Mojave County, Arizona, which is where uh, Kingman and Lake Havasu and Bullhead, Bullhead City is. I might be going out there back out there because I'm, I'm looking at the Phoenix metro area over the next five years and what I want to do and I just don't think it financially makes any sense. I mean, the, the fact that I sit here and pay $2,000 a month for a house that I'm never at doesn't make any sense to me. It was fun while it lasted, but I think I think the, the fun might be over uh, as far as living in Phoenix. I need to lock down a few other things and, and research a few other numbers, but yeah, that's uh, so live on the outskirts, okay? Save your money, okay? And don't worry about what other people think about you. Uh, if you need to live in a condo, if you need to live in a townhome for a while, if you need to live in an apartment, if you need to live with friends and family, if you need to live in a van, if you need to live in a camper, if you need to live in a semi truck, if you need to live in a single wide mobile home, who cares? If three to five years from now, you have a paid off living situation that is secure and safe and comfortable for you to sleep at, that has enough room for you to do whatever you need to do. Maybe you don't need room like I, I need room. Maybe you don't need a garage and a backyard to park three, four, or five cars and some trailers. Maybe that's not you. Maybe you could get away with even less than me. See, what I'm doing is I'm looking for an acre of land to put a mobile home, a mobile home on, a used mobile home that I am then going to rehab myself with my own hands. A brand new single wide mobile home delivered and set up is about $110,000 right now. That's not including your land, your septic, your well, your power pole, your fence around your land. So single wides are slightly, oh, I'm done. Damn, bro. The reviews of this place said I was gonna be here eight hours. It took them 30 minutes to unload me. I'll finish this in a second. So yeah, uh, single wides. Single wide mobile homes are getting expensive. So what I'm thinking about doing is,
buy an acre of land, throw my fence around it, get my well dug, get my septic put in, get my power pole all set up, get the power ran, and then uh, live in an RV while I rehab a used single or double wide mobile home. Yeah, that's what I plan to do. Now, do, do plans change? Yes, absolutely plans change. But my point is, if my plans go according to my plans, when I am on my 50th birthday, I will have a 100% paid off house, mobile home, property, whatever you want to call it. 100% mortgage free. All I will all I will pay is electricity and uh, taxes, right? So now uh, if I save up a hundred grand and I see a great deal on a property, then I'll put a hundred grand down and I'll finance the rest. You know, but this way my payment will be like 1200 bucks. See that, that is success to me. Success to me is you either paid for your whole property in cash and you have no payment or you made such a large down payment on that property that your payments are a thousand bucks a month, right? Thousand bucks a month. That's freedom. If all you pay is a thousand bucks a month for your home, you know, and you, and you make trucker money, you make 70, 80 grand, 90, 100 grand a year, and you only have a $1,000 a month mortgage payment, you are sitting pretty, bro. You are sitting pretty because you make so much money and you have so much money in the bank that you could, you could quit your job anytime you want. You could park your semi. If you're an owner op, you could park your semi anytime you want and let it sit for three, four, five months. So, if you are in the position to buy a home, buy a home. If you are in a position to pay two, three, four thousand dollars a month, and not and not really uh, put yourself in a bind, and not be a slave to your home, then do it. You know, I'm more about freedom of movement. I like being able to move around. I like being able to tell my boss to fuck off and quit a job whenever I want. That is true freedom right there. If you like discussions like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel for me. Don't forget to hit the like button also. I appreciate all you guys that have, that have joined up and subscribed to my channel in the last five months. I think we've done pretty well, man. For the fact that I talk about nothing and I put out mediocre videos for now just because I don't have the time to really take my time and script my videos or research my videos or edit my videos I appreciate the viewers that I'm getting I appreciate the subscribers and I hope you guys have a great day